So I'm going to try out the uh, Victory at Sea rules. These are the Mongoose playtest set for version 2, which um, are hopefully going to be similar to the uh, the Warlord ones then when they come out. Uh, this is going to be the Battle of the River Plate, and we've got HMS Exeter, Ajax and uh, HMNZS Achilles, and they are going to be facing off against, as most of you know, the uh, Graf Spey. In the scenario, what you need to, what needs to happen is that one fleet needs to destroy the other fleet, unless the Germans, the Graf Spey, um, damages the British more than she's damaged and gets off the top edge of the map. That one up there. So we're going to see how it goes uh, using these fleets. So the first thing that we need to do, do is roll for initiative for both sides, which is 2d6. I'll roll these near the ships. So the British have got a 4, and the Grafsby has got a 3. So the British have won the initiative, which means that the, the Germans have to go first. So the rules for movement stay. <coughs> state that uh, a ship can move up to its speed, which for the Graf Spey is six, so she can move six inches. It must move one inch minimum, and uh, it can try to turn, well, it can turn up to 45 degrees, uh, basically for every two inches that it moves. Um, so what the Graf Spey is going to do, she's going to try to keep the range uh, as far as she can from the, the British, and uh, she's going to try to execute a special manoeuvre, I think that's what it's called, and she's going to try to, to uh, come about. So to do that, she needs to roll her, her crew quality check. So what you do, you've got to get to above an eight, and you roll two dice and add your crew quality, which is four. So easily done it there. What that means is that she can turn 90 degrees instead of 45 degrees. So the idea here is that the, the Graf Spey must move two inches ahead. All, all ships must. Then she can make, because she succeeded at that uh, that roll, she can make a, a 90 degree turn. So we're going to turn 90 degrees. And then, um, actually we're going to, we're going to stop there. So that, um, that's the position where she ends up. Now the British cruisers are going to try to follow the uh, historical uh, manoeuvres that they did. So the Exeter is going to try to go to one side of the Grass Bay, whilst the two smaller cruisers, the Achilles and the Ajax, are going to go to the other and split her fire. So um, um, the thing with the British cruisers is they've got far less firepower than the, uh, the Graf Spey, which is way over there. So they need to close that range as rapidly as possible. So basically, Exeter is going to try to head up in this direction, whereas the two large cruisers are going to steam at full speed ahead. Okay, so to do that, um, what you, you do is that you move ships alternate, Alternately, so the uh, the Graf Spey is moved first because she lost the initiative, so then one British ship would move. If there was another German ship, it would move next, but because there isn't another German ship, um, it's going to be the British ships that move. So these two cruisers are going to speed ahead at full speed. I'll just move that one relative. And the uh, Exeter... going to move two inches compulsory then going to make a turn of 90 degrees which I didn't really explain when you turn you go from the middle point of your ship uh, up to 45 degrees so I just put that template on there she's not trying one of these fancy maneuvers that the Graf Spade made and now she's got four inches of movement left So we move ahead 
form. So once that's completed, um, we go to firing. And because the British won the initiative, they get to fire first. Um, Exeter is going to fire first and um, she can use her two forward turrets. Her rear turret probably won't be able to fire. You can tell this by doing, she has a 270 degree firing arc on the rear turret. So I've put a piece of paper, I'll just prop that on. Can't do, have to hold it. Um, and if we zoom out, it's a long way, you can see the, the that, try to hold it at the same time, that the graph spay is within that, that arc. So the, the rear turret, the uh, aft turret, I should say, can't actually fire at graph spay. So it's just the two forward turrets. Uh, now this is the data card I've made up for the Exeter. Um, the dice are the uh, hole points that she's got. She's got 21 hole points in total, uh, but when she, when she gets down to seven, uh, she's been critically damaged. As I said before, at the moment, her two front turrets, A and B, they can fire. The X turret cannot fire. And I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the light guns will be out of range as well. So the first thing we need to do is find out what range the ships are at. Now, to work out the range, you measure from bridge to bridge. I've put the tape measure on. It's not exactly on the bridge, but if you hold it, uh, I can't do it with one hand, but if I hold it above the ship, the range is actually 26 inches. So by looking at the chart, we can see 26 inches takes it to extreme range and the light guns are well out of range there. So extreme range gets you a minus two um, to hit. Now we look how many the AD is, that's attack dice. In this case, it's two. So she's going to roll two dice for each of the turrets. Um, uh, then because of the extreme range, that will be at minus two to it. And basically each dice needs to roll a four or, or higher. So that would mean that um, she needs to roll um, four dice in total, two for the A turret, two for the B turret. She needs to roll four or higher for each to hit, cause a hit. Uh, minus two takes it to a six. But she's also going to get, if we go back to the big one, the board, because of the angle she's shooting at, she's going to get a, a plus one because she's got the full side of the graph spay. Jumping in and out of focus there, let's see if I hold it better. She's going to get the, the plus one for a full broadside on uh, 90 degrees onto the side of the ship. Uh, so that takes it back to a five. So she's going to roll four dice and she needs five or more to hit. So here we go. So that's uh, one hit. And then we roll for the actual damage. Now the Exeter gets one dice uh, per hit of damage. And um, so we're basically going to roll the one dice. I'll go back to the charts. So looking at the chart there, we can see DD, that's the damage dice, which is one dice. Nietzsche needs to roll one dice and has to beat, looking at the, uh, the graph speed, her armor, which is three plus. So basically roll one dice and I need to get three or higher. But because it's extreme range, it gets plunging fire, <clears throat> which means you get a, a plus one to that. So that's two or more. So, roll the dice, we've got a 1, so it's not caused any damage. So now it's the turn of the, the graph spear to return fire. So she's going to follow the historical precedent and she's going to return fire on the Exeter. Um, or concentrate fire, and that's the Exeter way up there at the top. Sorry for the focusing, that's because of the angle I'm holding it at. Um, so the range is going to be exactly the same, 26 inches, and she can fire, fire with her A turret 
and her, um, I think it's her X turret. So we're going to look at the actual chart. So with the graph spay, you can see that uh, at a range of 26 inches, that is actually long range for her A and Y turrets to fire. Uh, her light guns are just out of range, they have a maximum range of 25 inches, so at 26 they can't quite fire. So what we do, we look at the AD for the A turret and the Y turret, which is three. So she gets three dice for each turret. Uh, when she rolls them, she needs a four or higher to hit. However, it's long range, so that's minus one, takes it to a five or higher. So she needs a five or higher to actually cause a hit. So I'll have a go with the dice, got six dice. We've got um, three hits. Take away those. So three hits. So we have a look at the actual table again now, and we get uh, we're looking at the DD now, which is the damage dice. So each hit gets two dice. So three hits um, is going to cause nine damage. No, it's not. I can't do my maths. Each hit it causes two. It's going to cause six damage dice uh, to be rolled. And each damage, damage dice has to roll above Exeter's armor class. So her armor class is again a three plus. Every ship in this scenario is a three plus. So it needs to be a three plus, but because it's at uh, long range, it gets a plus one to that. So um, that means anything but a one, basically, because it's a point of damage. So there we have um, two ones. They don't do anything. We have a five and a four. They cause one point of damage each. The two sixes cause a point of damage each, but they also maybe are critical hits. So first of all, We'll go back over to Exeter and do four points of damage to her. So using the dice that I'm, being, that I'm using, I'm going to flip this over to a two. And now we check whether the two dice that were sixes are actual critical hits. So to do that, we roll them again and we're looking for fours or higher. So there we have one isn't and one is a critical hit. So the one critical hit. So we now need to look on the critical hit table, which I've, um, I've printed out. It's, um, it's not come out particularly well. Try and get it in focus, there we are. And we're looking at this top part up here to start with. So I'm going to roll two dice. And I've rolled a three. Uh, a three is a crew hit. So we look down here on this table now, and the first level of crew hit here, uh, extra damage, non effect, uh, shrapnel, and the penalty is minus one attack dice, which I'll check what the uh, asterisk means. Well, you may have spotted that, it's down at the bottom of the table, what we need to do. We roll another dice, and that tells us what's actually happened. So on a one, a one to a three, the attack dice are lost from the light guns. So the Exeter has lost one from her light guns. So I'll go back to the Exeter up here, and see if we can get that in focus, there we go. So the Exeter had um, two attack dice with her light guns, so I'm going to make a note here, minus one attack dice, light gun. Okay, so now it's the uh, turn of the Ajax and Achilles to open fire. You can just see the graph spare in the distance there. Uh, you measure the range first of all from the bridge to the bridge and uh, the range is actually over 25 inches and 25 inches is the extreme range for both of these cruisers so neither of them can actually fire 
So now that we've done that, we move on to the next phase. And the next phase is the end phase. So in the end phase, you do various bookkeeping functions, but the only one that really affects us at the moment is the, uh, is the Exeter, who's got a critical hit, and she can try to repair that. So to do that, she needs to roll her, her crew quality, which is four, plus a d6, and she's got to get above an eight. So we'll have a go at that. Got a two and a four is uh, six, not above an eight, so she's not repaired it. So now we go on to the next turn.